So I suppose we should think of a way to start. <laughs> hmm. You're running it. I'm just here. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks. You've really fucking just left me out here in the middle of the ocean with this. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Aesthetically Different Podcast. It's supposed to be the second episode, but the first one got lost to time, so that will be called episode zero. Yeet! <laughs> it, it got yeeted out of existence. This is your host, LD Westy, alongside the peanut butter to my chocolate, the peanut butter to my jam, the peanut butter to my peanut butter. Lynchy. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, right. So, it's been a big week, mostly. Game Awards happen. They not, did? Not, yeah, they did. Oh, they did too. Yeah, yeah they, they did. It's, it's all done. It's that week. And surprisingly, uh, Norman Reedus and the Funky Peters did not win Game of the Year. Oh, shocker. It was terrible. <laughs> Shadows Die Twice got it. I, I, that I was surprised about. Uh, yeah, so am I. I... I Thought it would have gone to control. Uh, control or the Outer Worlds or... I know, of course, you would have went with the Outer Worlds. You love the Outer Worlds. <laughs> well, yeah, for sure. I love most of Obsidian stuff, but that's neither here nor there. I mean, I think it's a little here and there, but, you know. It's neither here nor there. Well... It's a bit of both. Tiny bit. A little, little bit. But, um, big thing that got announced was uh, the new Xbox. That wasn't the biggest thing that was announced... We both know this. Well, what was the biggest thing, Alex? Wolf Among Us 2. Yeah, it was. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big B's back. He's <laughs> <laughs> back, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, we were Hide wait. your kids, hide your wife. Because they're bringing everybody back out yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, we've been waiting for that game for a while. No, did, that really has been a long time coming, and I'm super duper pumped to be giving it a go again. I got the game originally because... um. So this was back during Walking Dead Season 1, and I was playing it, and I saw Telltale, and they released this new game, and I was like, oh, that's cool, because I thought it was like a werewolf game, like, and I thought you were just playing as a werewolf. And I'm playing it, and then this frog shows up, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on with this frog, man? Is this a werewolf game? What the fuck? And then he walks and in. And he comes He's in like, with oh, this cocky accent, like, bloody hell, mate, what is <laughs> going on here? He's like, oh, Big B, nothing's happening here, mate. And I'm like, Big there's, B, all right. There's a dude up there committing domestic violence, and then, but that's neither here nor there either. And then he goes, and he's talking, and he's, he's the woodsman, and I'm like, the woodsman, where the f- Is this on fucking fairy tales? Is, is this fucking something to do with fairy tales? And he's like, oh, you're, you're the big bad wolf. And I'm like, ooh, I can get behind this. I get why my name is Big B now. <laughs> <laughs> out, of, out of all the names you can choose. <laughs> yeah. Big B. Big B. Mm. <laughs> even, even better. Did you know what? your name sounds like the big bad wolf? <laughs> what's, your, what's, your, what's your first name? Big B. What's your last name? Wolf. <laughs> so that makes you Big B Wolf. Yes. Did Fan of the big bad wolf fire. My parents were. I'm just an unfortunate side product. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, w- I will say that. And I actually did write down here to talk about this with you. Um, I actually know how I rank my favourite uh, episodes of that season one, as in like one to five. Oh, shit. No, I, I see it as and a like, whole package. I, I agree with that. However, I, did, I didn't play it all at once. I uh, played it an episode at a time. Oh, uh, no, I... I played the whole thing. No, 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 I no. I sat no. down. I plump little me sat down <laughs> in front of a computer screen for twelve fucking hours. <laughs> it, it, this can of soda in hand, maybe a packet of chips. I can't fucking remember, but yeah, twelve hours. I plunked me ass in front of it, and I had a th- fantastic time. So, um, I like I said, I got the first episode, and that was when it first came out. And as soon as I finished it, I was hooked on the next one, on the next one, on the next one. Which is why I've got a problem with The Walking Dead, too. It's like, because I will play the first episode as soon as it comes out, and then I want the next one. And then it's just an endless cycle. Yeah, it's like a big giant thing of crap. Yeah, yeah. and like... But, like I drip feed it to you. Back, back when we watched Red vs. Blue, and Nick was like, oh, I'll wait till the end of the season, and I'll watch it all at once. I don't know how you can do it. Like, I, 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 couldn't, I wouldn't be able to do it. i got to watch it. But anyway, like I said, uh, my least favorite episode out of it, and like... When I say least favorite, I mean like I love them all, but if I had to pick one that I could um, put at the bottom, yeah, I would go with episode four. 
Okay, Simply because so and the next let me, question I'm going to pose to you okay, yeah. is, did you walk with the crippled person when you came into the crooked man's space? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Um, you can remember how you rank things, but you don't remember whether you did or you didn't I, walk I, with the cripple. I think I may have walked with the cripple. Yes, yeah, I think so I did. May I. Have. But um, this is going to be really off topic. I just realised there's a soccer ball on the roof. <laughs> oh. But anyway, um, I, I put episode four simply because um, episode four to me felt very much like a trailer for season for episode five. Oh shit! Yeah, it was very much because I feel like, and this is a problem I've always had with episode fours, is that you have to try and have a decent story for that episode but at the same time you have to advertise the episode, final episode episode yeah. 5 the big one which the only real thing I could think about in season 4 that really stood out to me was it was the first time uh, you actually meet the crooked man yeah. and even then it's not for long it's like at the very end of the episode and he's got that fucking droopy eye thing and, yes, yes. and he's, he's Big B it's good to see you yeah, like your hello old, Big B old buds you've for, <laughs> like, you forgotten your drunk scotch with him a couple of years ago like Jesus <laughs> Christ do, do you remember what happened in my face you kind of scratched me <laughs> Big B yeah well no I don't <laughs> <laughs> Big B, look what happened to my face. What did you do, Big B? I mean, I suppose let's talk in, in the terms of the trailer. There wasn't really much that was given away other no. than the fact that uh, Snow's back. Fantastic. We're going to have this fantastic, awkward sexual tension between Big B and Snow again and again and again. <laughs> um, yeah. No, that that's going to be fantastic. And then Snow's going to be that defiant thing again. That, that'll be fun. Yeah, always. Like, that's snow, though, so. Let's be honest. You know, they, was it the cliffhanger in season one where he walks down um, and there's the head on the edge of the step? Is that, that, is that, that was the, the cliffhanger? No, no, no. The cliffhang- episode one and two? Yes, the cliffhanger for the end of the season, though, is uh, where he starts putting it together that it may have been Nessa as Faith. Yes. That's the first episode. Yeah. So that brings me on to uh, number four, that being episode two. Because like episode two is a big step up from episode four, I will say that, yeah. with the whole um, fighting beast at the end, and then getting into the actual murder scene and seeing. How could you, your fucking beauty? I mean, <laughs> would you like to hear something really creepy that I learned? What? The person who voices Beast uh, voices Kenny in The Walking Dead, and the person who voices Beauty voices Clementine in The Walking Dead. Uh. <laughs> I know. I felt the same way. I was like, now that I've heard that, I just can't unthink that, and I don't like that. I'm really glad that I didn't know that when I'm playing. I played, mm. and I kind of wish I'd forgotten about it. Let's yeah. let's. Uh... I I do think it was a uh, good cliffhanger though. Finding out that Crane was there knows a bit more than what he's saying. Crane, <laughs> such a little bitch. Uh, number three would be the final episode, episode five. I loved that fight with Bloody Mary. That and and fight finally with Bloody Mary was awesome. And then finally getting to actually become the, the big bad wolf. Yeah. Instead of just the wet which was fucking awesome. That, that's the one where you catch Bloody Mary in your mouth and explode it, don't you? Yeah. Yes. Now that that was quite cool. Like, yeah. And and just all the Bloody Marys coming in and just attacking them one by one. and then the whole huff and puff and say it three times really fast. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. She's going to rise out of the grass now. Can I have that with two shots of vodka, please? <laughs> I've only got ginger beer. Yeah. That's like Christmas in your mouth, mate. That's fantastic. <laughs> um. But uh, the, the um fight, I especially really like the whole huff and puff part. That was a really good way of just like incorporating all of it. It's a little nod. Yeah. It is, yeah. A lot of the um, a lot of that whole thing was just subtle nods to, you know, fairy tales from, mm. from all through time. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, Jack, <laughs> being the, the mad dog that he is, you know, the only times you really ever see him is him doing dodgy shit, which, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, he's kind of following true to his fairy tale, I guess. Yeah. I, I also found a f- bit funny, bit awkward that uh, Georgie Porgy owns a strip club called The Puddin' Pie. Yeah. It's like... It's it's back to the fucking whole what's your name Bigby Wolf thing again. It's like what's your name Georgie Porgy. What are you going to open a place called Puddin' and Pie? I mean, again, that, again, not, it could be not seen so as a gimmick. Subtle. It could be kind of it, seen as a gimmick. It's not. It's 
yeah, again, it's a not so subtle nod to, hey, we have a subject medium that we're following, but hey, let's open a strip club and make it all fucked up. <laughs> And and that's a really cool thing about it as well is that a lot of these people have lived for a really really long time and now they've come to a whole new world and, and they've got they've nothing gone a whole new world and they've got fuck all. Did you and ever read back on the backstory of how they got there and like how they had to kind of trust Big B to I get there? I have the comics actually. Yes, it's believe it or it's not, it's very interesting it's, that his one thing of like I will take you there. The only thing you need to let me do is taste your flesh to see if you're actually like alive. If you'll say if you are who you say you are, because. Yeah. The enemies would just taste wrong, so he'd be able to tell from their taste if they're an actual person and if he should trust them to take them. And then the fact that they made him, like, their sheriff, and a lot of them kind of resent him for that because of who he was in the past. Right. It's, it's a very well-done story, and I give them credit. And I give credit to Adam Harrington for his fantastic performance as Bigby. He does a phenomenal job. What else can I say? Mm. All's been said, really. Uh, the second episode I've got, which I'll obviously give away what number one is, uh, is episode three, yep. which is the first confrontation with Bloody Mary, yep. as well as the uh, first time transforming into the werewolf form. Yes. <clears throat> I guess. I guess let's uh, let's skip straight past that. I want to no 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 no. I first want to say how good the the music, everything. Of uh, getting shot several times by Dean Dumb, only to stand up, keep walking towards him while they keep shooting you, yep. and you just get knocked back slightly, and you just keep going forward, yep. again, and you're just and getting again. angry at it, and, and you end up fucking throwing them. Yeah. Did you kill him? Or I did, did not kill him. I did not kill him. I tried to play Big B where I showed a bit of restraint. I. Uh, which yeah, well. which is did ironic you, with the line he did says. Did you in the burn first. the tree? I did not. Neither did I. I kept her as a um as a witch? to work. Yeah, yeah. I. It it goes back on what he said in the first episode. Like, I get people to do what I want to say by being big and being bad. <laughs> to which he, Colin immediately fucking makes fun of himself. Oh, by being big and being bad. Mm. Which obviously gives away what number one is. It's the first episode. I mean, hooks you in straight away with that cliffhanger. What? A, firstly, what a what a cold start, really. You know, you you're kind of thrown into this world, and then you you know. Straight into fighting. Yeah. The, starting, the like, had, had I known that it would have been about fairy tales to begin with, I probably wouldn't have gotten the game. But then when I got very sucked into it, I was like, wow, this is actually really good. I knew about it and I watched um, a Counter-Strike YouTuber. Initially, I started watching it and I went, this is really good. Mm. This is really, really good. I'm going to stop watching it. I'm going to download it and play it myself. So... I stopped halfway through season uh, episode one and went and bought it for myself and had a fantastic time. I waited till all five episodes were out, so I punched it through in one solid swing. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I played it to, uh, the, when it first came out and um, the cliffhanger kind of made me go, all right, well, now I've got to get episode two. And when it comes out, I've absolutely got to download episode two. Yeah. Because that's a great cliffhanger to have it on. Especially because of the fact that um, she's, no, no, I was going to say she's missing for most of the episode, but no, she shows up at the beginning of number two. I think if I could have changed anything about it, um, like how at the end of episode one, when the woodsman's there and uh, Dee's there and you've got to choose who to take, yep. I would have saved that to the end of episode two. I would have had the whole of episode two, you thinking Snow White's dead, only to bring her back at the beginning of episode three. Did she come back at the episode? End she, of episode yeah, two? because when you were, when you were in inter- no the start of episode two, because when you were who you were interrogating, who you chose to capture, uh, she shows up in the middle of it. Oh, and, she does and, too. She and does. is like, oh what God, are you doing? On? Yeah, yeah. With Blackbeard, uh, Bluebeard, sorry, who is voiced by Lee from The Walking Dead. Which speaking of which, how good is his voice? I mean, he's a very versatile voice actor. That's for sure. With my favorite line being, "Hey Ben, see ya." I would, I would, because Ben pissed me off, and I would spend so much time going up to him just to hear, hey, Ben, see ya. And just to see him go, yeah, and get all depressed again. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a bit mean, but I'd do it. Anyway, oh, um. Uh, let's, let's just quickly go off on a quick tangent in okay, The yep. Walking Dead. Now, 
I haven't played it since. Are we talking season one or are we talking the whole thing? I'm talking the whole thing. Ooh. How cool! I haven't played the latest season with Clementine. Have you? I have been trying to push it, it back. No, I haven't seen it. Okay, any of well it. then I won't spoil it for I'm you. I'm trying to push it back simply because of the fact that I am not ready. But there is a good nod to a certain character you leave on the side of the road. Oh no, not her. I uh, okay, so I know who you're talking about, and you're talking about Lily, and I absolutely left her there. I yeah. chose to leave her there. Yes. Um, one thing I will say, which I thought, because I was pl- I played season two as soon as it came out, yeah. and when they got to the episode, and I'm pretty sure this is on a YouTube video I did, which I put on obviously on YouTube of me playing episode one of season two, is that when they showed the next time on The Walking Dead, and they had Clementine come up, look shocked, and go, "You," I was like, "Oh, fucking Lily's back." Which shot me even more when it was Kenny. I was like, whoa! This is much better than Lily. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, like I was saying before that, the uh, big thing got announced there was uh, the new Xbox. Xbox Series X. And I haven't spoken to you... Big Cube. ...about my opinions of it. Because big I want to save it for this. What do you think about it? It's a very... Uh... Divisive thing, like because I hate it. Uh, I hate the look of it. I hate the name of it. Yeah. They could have took so many more. I even wrote down names that would have been better. Xbox bricks. Xbox infinite. Xbox infinite. Xbox Why? Bricks. Because the in- po- possibilities are infinite. You could have just called it that. With it would have gone well with Halo Infinite that's coming out. I think, uh, Alex, best- how is the Xbox going to fit in my entertainment system? It's not. I understand what they're doing because ideally the way that video games should be progressing is we shouldn't be going for a piece-by-piece piece development of consoles anymore. It should be, hey, this game I really want to play, um, I want to upgrade the graphics on it. So instead of buying a whole new console, you just buy, you know, a better graphics card. And then after a little while, you oh, know, so your that CPU what this is. starts to... Is that what this is? It's I th- like that. I think that's what's starting to happen. So okay. modular gaming is starting to become a thing. Right, so right. we're moving more away from the rigid consoles and more towards gaming PCs. Okay. That being said, though, I Fixed still... gaming PCs. I, I still love the look of certain consoles. Like the Xbox 360, the slim edition of the Xbox 360. I love how that looks. Yep. I love it. The PlayStation 2 now, uh, PlayStation 4, sorry, with the neon light on it. Yeah. Love it. I didn't like the original Xbox, but the Xbox One X and the way that looks, I like that. It's a good looking console. It is. I think the... I reckon you can easily sell someone on your product, on your console, straight away with how it looks. Before you even say anything about it, if it doesn't look good... You're dead right. And (laughs) that, that, that comes back... Down to like the aftermarket market that people was, have been using it that was like, there for the the PS2. Yeah. You, you and I are both victim, fallen victims of that. Where we have we we look at the controller and the controller looks awesome, and we go, "I want to buy yeah. that one." Absolutely, I did that with the new Xbox Elite. I traded in my old Xbox Elite controller because I'll be honest with you, the grips on that were not designed properly. I traded in the controller I got with my Xbox One X, and uh, I had enough money to trade it in and this is going to be pretty cool is that I got it for, from a $250 controller down to 50 bucks a $250 controller down to 250 bucks Christ that's Which, expensive there is one positive though and uh, I will say this uh, while I have knocked the Xbox Series X which I would have so much before they call it the Xbox Infinite like they could have just had Xbox and the Infinity simple would have went well with Halo they could have done it that would have been cool actually <laughs> thank you um I will say that one thing I do like about it is the fact that everything you've got on the Xbox One carries on. Like, oh, all your games. Backwards like, compatibility. Backwards compatibility, oh. as well as all your controllers. Your controllers will awesome. work heading forward. Well, that's, so like, that's the way it should be. Because this is Project Scarlet. This is the Project Scarlet they've been talking about. Yeah. And Phil Spencer has said, uh, president of Xbox, who, I've met him. He was a nice guy. He was at EBA Expo when I went yeah. there. He's good. Um, he has said that he was testing the... Xbox Elite 2 controller with Project Scarlet, which we now know to be the Series X, and uh, he has said that your controllers, everything you've had, that carries on. This is just a new console. Everything you've got, all your games, all your controllers, they work. This is just going to the future. And, and like I said, that's the way it should be. We shouldn't be really, you know, the 
very big hard cut between the 360 and the One. Yeah, I will say though, this uh, something else got announced as well. The fact that they are making the PlayStation Five. They haven't shown how it looks. Haven't shown any of it. But uh, <laughs> I've never actually seen a way of it uh, being announced like this. Like this is an odd way to do it. It's um, they've. I've announced that it is coming for PS5. They put it on YouTube that it says PS5. Instead of showing off a console or announcing anything, they announced a game first. That's just... No, Godfall. Oh, really? Yes, really. Uh, apparently, from the description of it in the video, and I've seen... It looks... Um, oh, God. It looks like an interesting concept, as they said, but I know what it's going to be like, and I don't think I'm going to end up liking it. But it's apparently a third-person fantasy looter slasher that is focused on melee combat. Yay. <laughs> but, um, you know how... I feel like this way with every single console generation, because we're currently in the eighth generation of consoles, is that um, with the main consoles that come out, there's a definite winner of the consoles. And I can definitely say that the uh, eighth console generation's winner is the PlayStation 4. 100%. There's no doubt about it. Like, the seventh generation went to the Xbox 360. Oh, it was... I think it was a bit, a bit less would, cut and I, dried than you think. I will say this, simply because... um. Many factors go into it, and that's like most games sold and shit. But one of the ones that get me is um, most media coverages, like video game hosts, YouTube channels and that. Like, say for example, for example, the Fine Brothers, they do their React series, and they'll have a couple games for being played in that. For the seventh generation, when they're playing like Red Dead Redemption, Black Ops, they were using the Xbox 360. Now that we move on to that one, they've gone to the PS4. Yes. I see it as, like the Xbox 360 was more... Mainstream Accessible. had had a lot more features, yep. like with the ability to party chat, which was something that got introduced on the PlayStation Four. Because on the PlayStation Three, you could only party chat if you didn't play a game, if you stayed in the party itself. Yes, and if you if you were playing the same game, you then resorted to the in-game party chat. Yeah, which was cancer. Sucked. Yeah. So I've done this. I, I figured we'd have a bit of fun with this. I have here the best-selling Xbox One and PlayStation Four games. But before I get into that for you, what do you think is... And this, we'll go overall, and then we'll go separate individual. So, what do you think overall the best-selling game for the seventh generation was? The seventh or the eighth? Seventh. PS3? PS3, the Xbox 360. Well, then, Modern Warfare 3. No. We're talking combined. And then we'll talk separately. Of Are we including the Wii in this discussion? Because then it was Wii Sports. <laughs> We're not including the Wii. <laughs> I love that Nintendo goes doubles in everything, like every generation, because they fuck up, <laughs> and then they've got to go, no, 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 this is it. But I've, I've, I will say, I love the way the Switch is. Yeah. I love the whole portability design. There have been a few console designs which I've gone, yeah, that's pretty good, like I said earlier. There's a couple ones. I love the design of the Switch. No, I love it. I mean, we both have our Switches sitting in front of yes, us. Yes, um, <laughs> because it's amazing. <laughs> we do, I, I can't believe we can actually say that. Like We have our video game consoles right in front of us and if we wanted to we could start playing yeah for sure but i'm i'm talking like we'll stick with the xbox and the uh, P the xbox 360 and the playstation 3 what do you think was the highest selling game combined well, again like i said modern warfare 3 but obviously that's not the case it is not is it a shooter or is it an it adventure game it is a shoot it's both i'm very surprised you couldn't say it's it was very end of the generation Far Cry 3. No. Would you like me to tell you? Yeah. It was Grand Theft Auto 5. Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. Uh, selling a total of, I think it was maybe 50 million. Yeah, right. And that's combined. And now the that Rockstar the fuckers got us again, because <laughs> they sold it again on the Xbox. Yes, they did. Splitting it up. So let's say we've got a list of PlayStation 3, list of Xbox 360 games. Yeah. Overall, out of both of those tiers, what was number one? Because I guarantee... You're not going to get this, because this is out of fucking left field. <laughs> I laughed at this when I looked this up last night, because I thought it was hilarious. Connect Sports Dance. You're very, very close. <laughs> Connect Sports Adventure. It is. <laughs> Connect Adventure. <laughs> Be, uh, so the second highest one. Do, does game sales count if it comes bundled with the console? Because Apparently I feel with, as though that's with cheating. With Wii Sports, it does. <laughs> it's cheating. I will say, so GTA 5 on the PlayStation 3 came in second. Selling with 21 million copies. Yep. Connect Adventure sold 24 million. 
I see this as an absolute win. I, I like I like that very much about that. The connect is the future. The connect is the past. Let me get my character. Yeah, He's a bit yeah, weird. Yeah, bit, bit and stiff. The, and then, because I got to talk briefly on this, how bad was this original pitch for the Xbox One? Or very much like. Do you not have phones? Connect always active. It's always watching you. Always plugged in. Internet always connected. But the one that made me that made me think, all right, you just lost a lot of your sales, was an interview they had afterwards where it was like, what? A, and this is literally what he said. It's like the guy's talking. It's like, what about our, our armed men and women overseas who prefer to play games than that, but won't have any online connectivity? What what do they do? And they respond back with, well, we already have a product for them. It's called Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. <laughs> Slap in the face. Yeah, well, that top ten ways to not make sales that'd be up there. Insult, and, then, and then with their whole service men and women. And then when their whole um, you can get a game, you can share it with one friend though, with only one friend. Yeah, that whole DRM thing kind of backfired, didn't yeah. it? And then Sony kicked their ass at E3, and it didn't stop. They were like, "No DRM, you can be offline, you can be online. Give your fucking games away. I don't give a shit." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And at that point, it was like everyone at that point, even you. All right, Sony's won this time. Yeah, this it's, generation it's goes to the over. PlayStation Four. It's <laughs> over. The only real problem I can remember the PlayStation Four having day one was their um, HD not being able to record, like because it would block off because it wouldn't allow you to record certain things, and a lot of people got frustrated with that. I knew it wouldn't let you record parts of Ratchet and Clank. Uh, it doesn't. Certain things it will not allow you to record. Yeah, so you could, you play through that thing because because obviously because it is a movie and they are copying clips from the yes, movie. Yes. They're copywriting um, it, but it's, so, I think it's absurd that, you know, it's just like, <laughs> uh, you ain't recording this, buddy. Here's, here's what we'll do. I'll give you, uh, you got five. Number, or, number four and five have the same amount. They're only separated by a couple thousand sales, but I won't include that. I'll just include the millions. Well, sorry, they're number five, exclusive? four, and three. They're all exclusive. So number five, four, and three are um, separated by a couple thousand. Let's try if, see if you can go from five to one. Last and of I'll us. tell you if it's on the list if you got it wrong. So go ahead. Last of Us. It's on the list. You got it wrong. It's not number five. Uncharted. On the list, not number five. Uh, other Naughty Dog game here. <laughs> um... <laughs> Okay, so obviously you're I'm not sure. I think big successful PlayStation games that have come out. Massive successful, massively successful because it's twice as successful as Halo. This has sold ten million copies. It sold ten million copies. Yes, number wow. five, four, and three all sold ten million. They're all separated by a couple thousand. So imagine if that's number th that two and one are higher than that. So two and one. Let's. We're not going to knock it. No, 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 no. We're going five oh, to God. one. Um. So I've got four out of five. I know. I know the four out of five. I just can't think. So of what are the one. What are the four out of five? You reckon? So God of War. Okay. Spider Man. That's on the list. They're both on the list. Yeah. And then you've just I have told you Uncharted, Uncharted and The Last of Us. Yes, of us. they're all on the list. So What's I've got number four five? Out of five. Um. If you can't get it, I will gladly tell you. Shoot. Horizon Zero Dawn. Number five. I haven't played it, but I have been meaning to play it. I just haven't found the time. I Again, this is one of those things where, you know, you're on multiple consoles and you're like, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. I'll, I'll, buy, the, I'll buy the PlayStation 4 to play the exclusive. Oh, I'm having too much fun with this. Yeah. It's like, even when like the new Modern Warfare Battle Pass just came out, I thought to myself, I should play it. But I'm having far too much fun on Pokemon Shield. Yeah. I have a league to beat. Um, Number four. So you've got four La choices. Last of Us or Uncharted? No. Spider-Man? No. Last of Us? This is great. You've been gotten. I, I've got Spider-Man. Like, no. Uh, God of War. God of War. God of War was not the best selling. God of War was number four. I thought God of War was no. number one. Jesus. It's the highest rated. It's not number one, though. Yeah, right. Number three. Um, Last of Us. Yes. Two is, is Uncharted. No. Two is Spider Man. Two is Spider Man. Is Number one is Uncharted. Jesus. Uh, God of War and Un uh, The Last of Us both selling 10 million copies. Spider Man selling 13.2 copies. 
uh, 13.2 million. And Uncharted 4 selling 16 million. Can, can we firstly dwell on Spider-Man before we start to move to Uncharted? Because Uncharted is worthy of that title. Um, how fun was Spider-Man? Spider-Man was amazing. That movement, I wasn't ex- that like, movement was a was derivative of Sunset Overdrive. I felt like the moment I started playing Batman Arkham City, because I played City before Night, because I didn't have... Uh, City before Asylum, because I didn't have Asylum to begin with. I got the Xbox, and I went to go look for games, because I had some cash to spend for my birthday, and I was like, what do I want to play? What do I want? Oh, I'm a fan of Batman. I'll try Batman Arkham City. And people are like, oh, you play it, and you feel like Batman, because you legitimately do. Once you get in the bat seat, you legitimately feel like Batman. And from the beginning of the game on Spider-Man, I could immediately say, I, this feels exactly like I'm Spider-Man. The syst- the traversal system, the combat system, everything that it... Because you said it felt like Sunset Overdrive, and it kind of feels like a very, very, very well-polished Sunset Overdrive combat and Look, traversal. I think Sunset Overdrive was, is a brilliant game. Um, if you haven't finished it or played Spider-Man, it... Spider-Man, play it. the test. Well, and that's really what it is. Um, not look what to mention that it's not a bad game. On look what we can do. Give us a uh, trademark. It, it, and, uh... It's a 14-hour tech demo um, with awesome DLC that's well worth the, I think it's like a $20 season pass. Yeah. You probably pick it up for 10 bucks now. Um, if you can pick it up at all. Yeah, online. Um, you should be able to. Yeah. But seriously, well worth the money. Yeah. Well, well, well. Spider Man was amazing. And the moment I saw the gameplay, and I was like, wow, that's really good. And a lot of people were like, doing this weird thing. It's like, oh, the puddle looks different. The graphics have been downgraded. I don't give a shit if the graphics have been downgraded or not. If the combat still, and the combat and the traversal still plays the same, I'll gladly play it. And the game's still gorgeous as yeah. well. And the story's even great, great too. Yeah. Like, seriously. Um, like, and they nerfed the puddle. <laughs> have you realized them? I realized something. This is pretty cool. The fact that uh, the main character in Sunset Overdrive is voiced by Yuri Lowenthal. Who also voices Spider Man? Yeah. They literally said, "You did such a good job in the test demo. We're gonna give you the rain main role." Yeah. And he even said it was like a dream come true for him to play Spider Man, and that's fantastic. Like, I can't even imagine having, having someone go up to you and say, "We've got this new game coming out. Uh, it's based on Spider Man, and we'd like you to play Spider Man." Uh, internally explodes. Yes. Yeah. It's. A, and the story mode is great. The whole, like, introducing yourself to Otto Octavius and seeing that he's not Doc Ock yet. In the back of your mind, it gives you a little hope of, like, may- when maybe he won't be Doc Ock. And then when you start to see that the biological when. arms there, you're like, all right, so it's just a matter of yeah. when, not if. When, yeah. But aside from that and being able to tell that Doc Ock was going to be the villain the whole time, very, very well done game. I especially like the fact that they incorporated Miles as well. Like, because now they could easily have the next game either go with Peter or you could go with Miles. You could have them both at the same time. You could, like, have it so you can swap between Peter and Miles. Uh, absolutely. And um, and, that, and that's just even better because I went and watched Into the Spider-Verse as well. I, I still like, haven't gone and seen that. Great movie. And I was like, wow. Because they only briefly touched on Miles and his story in the game. And then this whole movie dedicated to Miles and how he became that. It's like... This is the basis for a really interesting story if you get both their backstories going together. And they're kind of holding hands now and swinging off into the sunset. Yeah, and having the idea of Peter being like the teacher to Miles, that he's going to teach him all these things. On the wax off. Yeah. And at the end of like the DLC, when they're both on top of the Empire State, and Miles like, do we have to do this? Like, The only way you're going to learn is to jump. Yeah. I think number two will be fantastic. Yeah. Especially what with Harry and what looks to be Venom with him. I um commented on Reddit, because on Reddit, on subreddits, they have a um after game thing where you can chat about spoilers and that. Yeah. I wrote this very big ball of text describing the whole thing and what I thought. It's the uh, top rated comment on it, simply because people liked the way I spoke about it. And then just discussing the fact that with the lighting on Norman making it look green, so like a little hint of, yeah, we can go the Green Goblin path. And then there's Harry with the symbiote, and it's like, and we can go a different path for Venom too. Right, we've got options here. Is it Insomniac Spider Man or Spider Man game? Spider Man game, I'm pretty sure. Spider Man PS4. I'll uh, have a look because I've got it in my comments. I'll tell you how many upvotes it's got. 
if I can find it. Because I've done a lot of dumb commenting and shit. Yeah. <laughs> or just dumb jokes. <laughs> Spider-Man PS4? Um, I think it is Spider-Man PS4. Okay, yeah. Spider-Man PS4 spoiler slash ending discussion thread. A total of 2,632 upvotes on my comment. If it says so obviously spoilers ahead, that's me. Hi. That's me. That's me. Hello. Oh, look. That's the profile. <laughs> Hello. Catch that, my dude. Um. Submitted. It's mostly... My submitted isn't very interesting. It's either me on the WWE game subreddit discussing and showing that, hey... I've made these. Your game is broke. Fucking kind of, fix but it. it's also been like I can make these graphics for matches, and that. I'll show you one of them because I'm very happy with how I can make this. Because my goal is to make it look like as legitimate as possible. Ooh, oh, squeaky, squeaky, squeak. I'll, I'll just pop round. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, and I'm like, I can do a universe with that. But mostly, I've been going on subreddits, going, "Hey, look at this tattoo I got. Isn't it cool?" I did it with The Last of Us and The Zombies one. The Zombies one reacted a lot more than The Last of Us one. Yeah, right. Yeah. What did The Zombies one say? Um, awesome, I got it to celebrate the end of Ether. This is great because someone immediately stood up for me here and he insult This guy insulted me and he was like, um, oh, where is it? He's going to be really mad when they reboot the series again. And someone recorded, so then he gets another Towie. Yeah. <laughs> That's the beauty of tally marks. It's just a line. Yeah. I'm sorry, this is for the main Ether game, not the if they make a reboot spin off, okay? This is like, and I can do it right now on my leg. Fucking World at War, Black Ops 1, 2, 3, 4. Five games, main Ether story. I might need to get the five tally mark done a bit more. It's faded a bit. Yeah. I, I cut my tattoo the other day, so you can see there. Cut a yeah. couple of lines there, because I got it on the door when I was walking out of work. And I was like, oh, fuck, that stings. And then I was like, oh, it looks very fresh. And it's now scarred. Can we talk about Pokemon now? Uh, we can talk about Pokemon now. I have that written here underneath uh, all the games shit. So we'll start with this. Because I thought about this very, very hard last night. Um, so I told you I never played Black and White. I didn't have a um, working DS at that point. I only had the DSi. So I could only play Diamond and Pearl up to that point. Um, and by the time I got... Uh, the DS, because I got the Nintendo 2DS, and at that point I bought uh, Pokemon Y. Yep. Because I, I base my game choices on the legendaries on the cover. Yep. If I like the look of one more, I'll get that one. I don't give a shit if it's weaker. Shout out to uh, Groudon and Kyogre. Thanks for picking Sapphire, Joel. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, if I like the look of the legendary, I'll get it, which is why I chose the one from Shield. Because, and this is a little dumb thing for me to say. The reason why I didn't pick Sword is because I don't like the look of the Sword Pokemon simply because it's just a dog with a sword in its mouth. I At least with this one, it's, it like has a mane that's a shield. I don't disagree with you on that. And not to mention how silly he looks when he attacks. <laughs> um, <laughs> At least with the shield one, he's like, shield locks in a place and then he fucking just rams head, head butts, first. Yeah. So let's let's see where it falls in terms of my favorite. Pokemon I have games. I have my favorite gens here as well. Yeah. I will put obviously Unova Black and White at the bottom because I haven't played it well enough to come up with a good opinion for it. Yep. Under that, and this is going to be very blasphemous because um, I didn't play the Game Boy as much growing up. I had Red, and that was about it. I didn't have many games. I'm going to put Johto because I still and two. Yeah. I still haven't played Johto fully, dude. Okay. I can see you getting angry. No. But here's the thing. I tried to play uh, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, but at that point, you know how when you have off periods when you're just like, I don't want to play any of this for a while. I have no interest in it. Yeah. I was like that with it. And I tried to play it, but I just wouldn't. But I always knew that if I did play it, uh, I would always choose Totodile as my starter. I loved Heart Gold and Soul Silver, right. and we'll see where that falls in my list. But That's fine. After that, I would probably put uh, Kanto. Yep. I do like Kanto. Kanto's great. The original 151 Pokemon. They're good. The gym leaders works out well. And Have you noticed, and I realized this, that um, the Kanto gym leaders and the Johto gym leaders, why there isn't a rock type in that is literally because they weren't with Johto. All right. There has to be eight new types of gym leaders 
Everyone needs to be different. We can't have any that were in Kanto. Because there's not a single type in Can- uh, in Johto that's in Kanto as a gym leader. And vice versa. I've never really noticed that, but you are right. Yeah. Because they were like, new challenge. And then with Sino, they, uh, then with, not Sino, uh, Hoenn, they shook it up a bit. So we'll go to my top three, because I think it's just six gens of Pokemon. No, there's eight. What are the eight? So, there's Red and Blue. Kanto. I mean, Pops. like, regions. Like, Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, uh, Sino, Unova. Unova. Kalos. Yeah, the Galarian. Oh, Alolan. Okay, let's be, Okay, you know what? No, I'm changing it a bit right now. I'm changing it right now. The list is being changed, Alex. Alolan, bottom of the fucking list. How dare you get rid of gym leaders? I don't give a shit if I have to walk into some forest to go kick this wild dog to get a gem. It's not a badge. I don't want a little fucking crystal. Ooh, look at it. It's sh- I don't give a shit. I want my gym badge. If I have to stab that dog to get my badge, I will get my fucking badge. I will turn its tooth into a gym badge, Alex. Who the fucking game freak thought getting rid of gym leaders was a good fucking idea? It's not even Elite Four. It's, oh, you've done everything on this island. Here's this guy. Off you go to the next one. I got. You're not I wrong. didn't even get halfway <laughs> through Ultra Sun because I was bored shitless. I didn't get halfway through the first island. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I I'm met, the biggest Pokemon stan ever. Yes, I met, the, I met the corporation people and I immediately went, all right, we're going to be the evil bad guys. And then I was like, I just genuinely don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I can't. Because one of my favorite things is the gym battles. And it's like, you get to go into this forest. All right, do I find the gym leader? No. You find an ultimate wild Pokemon. Okay, but how do, I, how do I get my badge? You don't. You get a Z crystal, which you can buy exclusively at toy stores. <laughs> do, the, do the Z move dance and... Okay, so go. now... So, let's change it. Alone's at the bottom. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, Alone is at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, okay. Up from that, I will put Unova. Because once again, haven't played it as much. Haven't played it at all, actually. I think you should play it. Um, solely because it is a fantastic game. Okay. And it is worth the, the time just to sit down and just give it a fair rock. I will say that one of the reasons why I didn't play it, why I had no interest in it, is I looked up Pokemon, looked at what they all looked like. And I looked at them and I was like, I could fucking step on you. You just don't look good. <laughs> and then, and then, um, so we'll put Johto above that simply because I haven't played it, but I guarantee uh, if I do end up playing it, it'll go higher. I guarantee Johto and Unova will probably go higher. But after that, we'll put uh, Kalos, which was X and Y. Spicy. Yep. Yep. Uh, simply because I put Kanto above it. Yep. Uh, then, so this is the top three right now for me. Galar. At number three. Yep. I dig it. The gym challenge is a good idea. It's and a breath of fresh air. All the badges becoming one medallion is cool. And then the whole tournament style. Getting rid of the Elite Four is different, but I think it definitely works for this. Mm-hmm. Of like, you face other people that have gotten the badges. And then if you can beat them, you're the representative for the gym challenge go against the gym leaders and whoever wins that tournament faces the champion that is the way it should be done and I like that because I like the idea that before we did it all the gym leaders would get to have a go at Leon to see if they could beat Leon and and become the champion yes yes I look I I think your list is your opinion I'm, we'll, st- I'm not done we still and, got two more to and go we'll, we'll get into it we got two more to go Alex we will go and I know you're going to hate these but I don't give a shit uh, number two, very near and dear to my heart. It was a Pokemon game I spent a lot of time on simply because I had a lot of long car trips with a Game Boy Advance XP by my side with a light on so I wouldn't have to play by traffic light on the way home. We'll go with Hoenn. So that's Pokemon Ruby and, and I never played Sapphire. Fuck Sapphire. Ky- uh, Groudon all the way. Uh, Ruby. Because I um I enjoyed it. It was the first... I always had the problem, and I'm not ashamed to say this, in red and blue. Where I would only ever use Charizard, which led to the rest of my team being very, very, very weak. 
wasn't until Ruby that I figured out maybe I should try and like swap the branch out a little bit. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I was a dumb kid, you know that. Um but yeah, Hoenn, I love the idea, love the gym leaders, love the look of it all. And I very much liked the um Pokemon contest you could do. That was a little different breath of fresh air. I know it wasn't like overly impressive. Unpopular opinion. I hated it. Uh, the Hoenn, or are you talking about the contest? Pokemon contests. That's fine. I wasn't an overly big fan, but I just thought it was something nice to do on the slide as well. I love the look of a lot of the Pokemon. Yeah. These are very there up there. There is a Pelican that looks like a toilet. Yeah. A toilet. He's the worst one in the in, in that deck, so don't get me wrong, but he looks like yeah. a toilet. I will say the starter Pokemon in this are very high up as like the best three starters looking starters you could yes, get. Yes, hundred percent. Their final evolutions like Swampert, Skeptal, Blaziken. Great, great looking designs. And then the Mega Evolution I I found this weird that the Mega Evolution for Skeptile makes him a dragon. I like it because he's do, a lizard to begin with. I do like it. It's still a bit weird though. But we can definitely say Blaziken absolutely overpowered straight away. But I think the reason Blaziken, again, I suppose I give a bit of background. Um, I did play a fair bit of competitive Pokemon battling back when I was at school, and I was quite good at it. But the reason Blaziken was so broken was because of his bloody hidden ability of speed boost. At the end of every turn, he'd nearly double his speed. So he was a, he, he hit hard, and his deficit was his speed. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Yeah, well... Uh, after one turn... Move like just... a chicken! <laughs> Peck like a chicken! <laughs> Look, he just became unreasonably um, good. It was, yeah. it was broken. Yeah, absolutely. So that brings me to my number one, which I know you're absolutely not going to agree with, but I don't care. I loved the design of every Pokemon. I loved the gym leaders. I loved the look of the badges. And I can see you getting mad now. Uh, Sinnoh is my favourite. I went with Chimchar. I love the design of Infernape. But I will say one thing that I know you can't deny about Sinnoh. That generation has the best champion in Cynthia. She's no a challenge. Oh, she's hard for sure. Um, I don't think there's Shout any... Shout out to Spirit Tomb at that point who had no weaknesses. I, I don't think there's any, any uh, champion hard. I feel like Sinnoh is kind of up top for me, and I'll explain why. Because of the fact that at that point, I hadn't played Pokemon for a long, 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 long time. Like, we're talking years at this point. And I had only seen glimpse and things of Pokemon. I started getting the Pokemon itch again. I wanted yeah. to play Pokemon again. And then when I finally got it and I finally played it, because I was Diamond. I played Diamond. Yeah. And then I played Platinum. And I played it and I was like, this is just as good as I remember. This is fucking great. I think all Pokemon bar Gen 7 are one. A great, but... And, and we'll get into that. I'll go. I'll go gen by gen rather than uh, region by region. Yeah. But well, you know what I meant by gen by gen. Like yeah, 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 yeah. The main games, which which is one of the reasons why. Like I chose red because it was a gift. I guarantee if I yep. got blue, I would have preferred blue. But shout out to red, which I can definitively say every person who got blue, you're the Gary. You are absolutely the Gary. It is shown in like cartoons, like Pokemon Generations and shit. You're the Gary. We're the ash. Only this time we win. You go to gold and silver. Who's waiting on top of the mountain? Is it blue? No. It's fucking red. red. Did you see that? This is pretty cool. I don't think you've seen it because it wasn't in the movie. But Because uh, I don't think you've seen the movie of that. But Detective Pikachu, they have a cameo of red. I haven't seen Detective Pikachu. I think it's actually sitting at home. I've, I have this really bad issue of where I go on stints of watching shitloads of movies to nothing. watching nothing. There's for, for months and months. There's ahead. at the beginning of the movie where they're having there's a Pokemon tournament going on, and one kid throws out a Pokeball. I don't remember what Pokemon comes out, but you turn around to him. Kid's got a red jacket on, red hat, and it's like <laughs> you know who this is. <laughs> you absolutely know who this is. Catch this uh, re hot off the press reference, yeah. my dudes. And it's like really. Have you seen Pokemon Generations? No. It's a four episode thing. Which tracks the like the original red versus blue story. So you follow from red, whose goal is to catch all the Pokemon and that. And he goes, and it's good to have a look at it and get an idea of what it's like. Because he goes to Brock, and Brock's like, "Do you have any Pokemon badges?" And Red's like, "No, I don't." So Brock goes, opens up this wall, and there's all these Pokeballs there. So he just picks two, like of obviously weaker Pokemon that he's got yes. to fight against. And the fact they actually have like HP bars, and they've got a 
watch all that. It's a good series, and I do recommend it to you. It's very good. But enough about me and my gens or regions and that. Let's go to you. What is it, Alex? What's starting at the bottom? And we know what's starting at the bottom. Say it, say it, say it, say it, say it. I want to hear it. Gen 7 is... Yeah, it is. Holy and truly at the bottom. Yeah, it is. Um, Are you talking... Are you including Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire in that? No, Gen 7... That was Gen 6. Now... Really? I thought it was Gen 7. So, yeah, that was part of... um, X and Y. And and there there will be a reason. I will will circle back to that. So, now... So, bottom of the list, Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon. Bottom of the list, Alone. Um, the games were boring. Well, yeah. I think. I, I think will say there the... is one thing I like, and that is uh, regional differences. I, I kind of like that. I like like uh, different forms, like yeah. Meowth. Alone and Vulpix. Meowth. And, and now... Um, Galarian Meowth. Meowth now has three separate forms yeah. that it needs to... You need to remember. Have you seen... And I'm sorry to get you off topic here. Pokemon Yena. Yeah, the Aussie one. Yes, yes. Have you seen, he's coming cool. up with uh, designs and that, and he had one for. Um, oh, I'm trying to remember what the Pokemon is. It's the ground dragon off um, Hoenn. It's uh, do you mean Dunsparce from Gen Two? No, 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 no. Flygon. Flygon. Yes, he had Australian version of Flygon, yep. and it becomes a ghost and ground type. Right, and it looks awesome. Like he is very good at it. And a lot of the designs, I love the designs, the fact that the um, starter water is just a platypus with a mullet. <laughs> I love that. That's great. Yeah, I'll try and find it for you because I thought, and I look at it and it's like, uh, here's, here's a good one. It's a uh, fire bug type that's based on cricket and the ashes. Oh, that is quite cool. That is cool. It starts off a cricket ball and goes to wickets then to burnt wickets. Because of the ashes. That is quite cool. And the, and the description he has for it for the final evolution is it, it just burns itself out. The wood on its body burns itself out. He's got Austra- uh, Australian Sableye. That's quite cool. Which, as he, as the story went, uh, they came over in the gold rush and they went mad because <laughs> of all of that. There's uh, Australian... So do I? Cool. So do I. Um, no, that is quite cool. Yeah. And then um, I'll try and find the one I was talking to you about. Like He's got gym leaders and they're all... He's only done a sneak preview. He hasn't shown what they are. Here we are. So here is uh, Trapanich, Vibra- uh, Vibrava, and Flygon, the Australian, Australian forms. They are really, really cool. Can yeah. I take that? Yep. Uh, I'll include that, obviously, on the YouTube or podcast video. If you can't, um, try and watch it online or look up the guy. Mind if I quickly yeah. find his name and that? So you can follow him on Twitter at Vivinkart, which is at V-I-V-I-N-K-A-R-T, Vivinkart. Uh, good guy. A lot of good stuff. He's got a whole thread on Pokemon Yeah Nah. His designs are amazing. They look exactly like in-game stuff, and it's amazing. It's fantastic. And if I were Games Freak, I would get in contact with this guy. I'd get him helping you make the next region, because this guy's proving, like, there's still a lot you can do with Pokemon. There's still a lot of places you can do. Like, the first four were based in locations in Japan. And then when, with Unova, I know they based that on uh, New York City. Yes. And then Kalos, they was based France. it in France. Then obviously alone was Hawaii. Hawaii. And with this one, it's England. Yeah, so, all right, let's circle back to Gen 7. Yeah, so um, Gen 7 was horrid. I. There, there are not enough words for... Unengaging and boring gameplay. I liked um, the fire starter simply because he became a heel wrestler. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I love that. Incineroar. Well. Yeah. Incineroar. Um, and the fact that he's in Smash Brothers and I can make him pose like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Have you seen a video someone made? It's great. Where he's um, he just trash talks the whole time with Incineroar. It's like you fucking mess with Incineroar, you get the fucking Incineroar slam. <laughs> No, I haven't, but now I'm going to have to, we'll, we'll do it post-podcast. <laughs> but I, I hated the design of the water one, the water fairy. I hated it. Um, Not because I had me anything being else, a, I just thought it Me being good. a water pipe, pipe stan, I had you, to pick You him. are the water type guy. You've always gone with water. Um, I've gone with whatever I think. Like, here's, here's my pattern. Uh, and this is obviously my next question of what starters did you pick? For you, and I know the answer for you is all water except for Sinnoh. Because you went with Chimchar for Sinnoh. 
because you didn't yes. like Piplup. I don't like Piplup. I will say, uh, mine were, and this is even if I didn't play it, is what I'd choose. Uh, Charmander. Okay. Because I love Charizard. For uh, Totodile, because I love the look of For Alligator. For Alligator is For awesome. For Alligator looks awesome. Skepta- um, Skeptile, obviously, because I love Skeptile, even though it starts as Trico. Swampert but... is the coolest looking po- shiny Swampet, Pokemon absolutely. ever. Yeah, he looks and cool. And I am so, so disappointed. I, I spent hours um, hatching a competitive Mudkip in a shiny version so I could use him competitively. How'd that go? Imagine my disappointment. I, I hatch one. Okay. It comes out bright pink. Um, imagine my sheer disappointment when you realize I can't use it anymore. Why? Gen 8 has 450 Pokemon, and right, of those Pokemon, it. all I the Gen 3 it. starters do not exist. Right. I, and I find it really disappointing because I see all the... Uh, and and we'll, we'll circle back to it. Um, I see all this time and effort being put into, um, you know, your, your Gigantamax and stuff like that, which was which is basically what Mega Revolutions should have been. Um, Mega Revolutions were a shit fight. Um, they were really fun, but they got a I bit like ridiculous. some of the designs. Some of the designs turned, were really cool. It turned Kangaskhan from a completely irrelevant Pokemon in competitive battling lies to a Pokemon that was pretty much untouchable. Yep. So, you know, you get 100%, 100 stat increase to your base stats, and then you get, a, and then you get another... I think it's worth it works 50%. Well, for both of us being Pokemon guys, simply because you're more of the competitive side yep. and I'm more of the design side. Yep. I, so, I, I like can, you I have said, admire. like, straight up, like, straight then, it's like some parts of Mega Evolution you like because it took Pokemon that you wouldn't consider and yeah. it made them something Busted. you'd look at to have a look and go, maybe Mega, be... Mega Blaziken While, turned the game mm, inside out. Yeah. Well, they, I they like, banned it. I like <laughs> the design of certain Mega... Some Mega Evolutions I'll hate, some I'll like. Yeah. But um, one I can remember liking, if I can try and remember it very quick, is I, d- I love the look of Mega Charizard X. Mega I lo- Charizard X where he goes black and his flames go blue. Because in my head, the whole time, ever since I saw Charizard, even years ago, as I thought... I wanted what he'd be like with a blue flame. I bet you he'd look cool with a blue flame. And then when they showed that, I was like, fuck. That's my it, shit. <laughs> even when I when I went to the store to buy my 2DS originally, and either X and Y, I was staring at it. I was like, I love the look of the Pokemon for Y. But I know I can get Charizard X if I get X. But I like the look of the Pokemon on Y. Joel, I need to trade with you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, unpopular opinion. I much prefer Xerneas over Yveltal, and that's not from that's a. What? And that's from not a from a. No, that's not a, from a typing thing. Oh. That's a design thing. I think the deer. He looks like a giant deer with Christmas lights on the end. I like. Him. I like Yveltal simply because I like the whole red glowing with the veins thing and the whole. Yeah. Stretching out I to look that. like a Y. I dig that. Like, we'll we'll quickly go on this real quick. Ho o Lugia. Lugia. I agree with you. Lugia's partially, got those cool pa- things on the Partially, back, on his back. so you, Pokemon 2000 influenced you a bit too. No. Because the Pokemon 2000 movie I, I where Pokemon those Silver. things folded up and then they folded down and I was like, all right, you've won me over. Lugia it is. Um, no, I had Silver. Even though, even though I know Silver is the blue and Gold is the red. Yeah. That one I can begrudgingly accept, but I will always choose Lugia over Hoa. All right. Groudon or Kyogre? Groudon. Easy. Yeah, it is. There's no discussion. No. You know what I love that I was happy about? Primal Groudon's special ability. The water attack evaporated in the harsh sunlight. Have you seen the little comic? Do you know where why they've... Groudon's better than Kyogre? Why? It's because Groudon is statistically slower than Kyogre. So there is no way that Groudon's ability will ever pass Kyogre. So Groudon will perpetually always be in sunlight. It will never rain against Kyogre and Groudon. But that's just me. I, have you seen the little comic someone made? It was the first one that originally came out of Groudon and Kyogre fighting with Groudon on this tiny little patch of land surrounded by water. Yeah. And Kyogre's like, you sure you want to do this? He's like, shut up! And Kyogre, and Rayquaza comes from the sky and he's like, well, you two kids, shut up! And then they released a new version of it where they're both in their primals and it's the same thing. He's on the little patch of land and Kyogre's like, hey, you really sure you want to do this this time? And Groudon's like, I'll 
I'll beat you this time. He's like, all right, yeah, cool. He enjoy the times four disadvantage. And he goes with Hydro Pump and it looks epic and it's coming at him. And Groudon cowers up and then it just disappears. And then it says at the bottom, and Groudon just gets this evil smile on his face and it says at the bottom, the water attack evaporated in the harsh sunlight. <laughs> and then Kyogre is in the water with his eyes really fucking massive. And you can see Mega Requasset in the background just going, Ah, oh, shit, bro! <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay, now, now that we've done that, we've decided. Um, Palkia or Dialga? Uh, indifferent about the two, but if I had to pick one, I'd probably pick Dialga. Yep, I, I agree with that. I was Dialga. Uh, Reshram or Zekron? Because I can't uh, really answer this one. Zekrom. Zekrom. Okay. Zekrom was cool. He was Dragon Electric, mm-hmm. and he was badass. was Dragonfire. Um, I can't really have an opinion on that one. Like I said, yeah. haven't played it, but I'm sure I will figure it out. <clears throat> Gen 5, like just quickly to circle back, Gen yep. 5 had so many legendaries. So many I legendaries. Have, I have read that. They, there's like 15 of the fuckers I, that I were I remember released. playing Sinnoh and thinking, man, there's a lot of legendaries in this. And then Joel told me, oh, there's even more in black and white. I'm like, what? Uh, um... What was after that? I'm trying to think. After so after that was Kalos, right? Yes. So we've already discussed that one. Yep. Um, so after Kalos was Aloan, who gives a shit. I can't even remember them. Honestly, the, the sun game and is... the moon one. I can't remember their names. Sol Gao, I think the sun yeah. one was because I picked him. I picked and Lunea. Ol- yeah. Yep. I went with the sun one. Yep. But I never caught him. Neither did I. I didn't like the fact that he had to evolve into it. I thought that was a really cool little tidbit. I did not. I thought that I, was in awesome. In my mind, a legendary Pokemon should have one form, and it should be that. So aside from Mega Evolutions and Primal Forms, it shouldn't evolve from anything. It shouldn't evolve into anything. It should be as is. I'm going to disagree with That's you on fine. that one, Big we Chief. We can disagree. We can disagree. So we've obviously chosen. So we have Galar now, yep. and we've you've got Sword, I've got Shield. Do you enjoy yours, or would you oh, rather she, mine? Oh, yeah. shit, um, So you prefer... He's cool. He's, um... When he's actually carrying the sword, I think he looks cool as hell. Even when he's carrying, not carrying the sword, he's got an ear chopped off. So does mine. And he, he a... it just looks awesome. I like mine. Uh, I like how they're both... Like, if you put them, like, left and right, and if you smack their heads together, the cut actually goes across their ears yeah. in the same direction. I like that in mine. I can't remember his name, because it's... I don't know why they're all both with Z... Sure, whatever. But with the shield Pokemon is the fact that when he doesn't have his shield form, or even when he does, the fluff of his hair looks like a knight's like helmet with the little fucking <laughs> thing popping out of the top. I haven't seen that. You haven't? No. Nah. Oh, I, while we're talking right now, while we're doing this podcast, I'm quickly loading up my Switch to show you this because I fucking love that design. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's great. But I, I very much enjoyed the way they did the legendaries this one. It was different. It was a breath yeah. of fresh air. No, for sure. Especially with catching like the third Pokemon first, because you usually catch one of these two, go into the league, and then... And with this yeah. time being very different of being like, oh, you don't do that this time. It's like, oh, okay. Because the whole time I was thinking, am I going into this without like one of the legendaries in there? Yeah. Okay, so what's his name? Zamatera. Zamazessa. Zamazetta. Oh, he does cool, doesn't That's cool as hell. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Zamazenta and Zakian. Zakian, yeah. Zakian. Right. So I'm going to circle back to my list too, by the way. Because I, I will say this. I do not like the design of Eternus. Yeah, no, he's forgettable, yeah. I think. I think he's very... Requisory. One of the problems I also had with the um, the beast things that they had in Alolan. Which Ultra, I saw, Ultra Beasts. Yeah, is they look very artificial Pokemon. Well, that's what they are. I don't like it. Um... All right, let's circle back to my list because we kind of got a bit off we track there. We did get a bit off topic. So, so back to your list, we were still, <laughs> we were still and, at the bottom. Alone, and dead at the bottom. Yes. Okay, so we'll follow up with Gen 2 because... Ge- really? I find Gen 2, if, if you've ever gone back and actually played them... I have I not. find them unbearably annoying. Really? Firstly, Pokeballs miss, so... You can't like there's there's a chance. Are we talking like, like when you throw the, zone no 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 when you throw a, a regular pokeball at someone there is a like a five percent chance that you just miss. Right. 
Like, so that he doesn't even get a chance to wiggle, they miss. Okay. Okay? The mechanics that's, in that game that's is, very weird. is broken. Right. How, how do you, how do you, you what do you learn, mean by broken? Dratini learns bind at level 5. Dratini. Yes. Dratini can beat a level 100. What? If the level 100 doesn't use a move. Because it just continually uses bind. That would take forever. It would take forever, oh. but it's doable. Have you seen the uh, the strategy of uh, Rattata winning against any level? If he's got like a focus sash and then a certain move that like dishes the yeah. attack back. So so he has a focus sash yep. and then endeavor. I've seen this. I just don't remember how to do it. So it's a focus sash yeah. and endeavor. So focus sash, then you use endeavor, okay. and then you use a quick attack the next move. And regardless of what happens, because he is on one HP, yep. the quick attack will. Insta kill the the next person because it's got priority. That is amazing. That's brilliant. <laughs> okay, Joey was right the whole time. Joey ultimate was. ultimate Rattata. You've you've just got to breed it properly and make sure that it has this the correct going, moves. This is going very much into Pokemon Rusty things with the whole ultimate bit of. Yeah, uh, look, the next one, um, yeah. Gen two. So 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 far. And I'm just going by regions right now. Yep. So it's Alolan, Johto. Kanto. Kanto, okay. Um, no, Kanto's below it. Kanto's below So Gen it. 1, so red and blue is so, above Alolan. Okay, so it's Alolan, Kanto, Johto. Yes. Okay, yes. Okay, so again, I think it's just the, the issue with is with it is they're still good games. I still but think I think at the same time with, I agree with what you're saying where it's like we're trying to find our steps here. We're trying to find what works, what we need to improve, yes. what we can remove. Look, um from the from it they're they're not bad games, but they do show their age. Yes. Um I still have fucking difficulties in red and blue in trying to find that fucking bike tag. I have completed that game walking around and i have been the most bored i have ever been because i don't have a bike is it no it's um the one where you get on the cruise ship oh the pokemon fan club there well i never find you, it so you talk to the pokemon fan. i always fucking miss my chance <laughs> <laughs> and then i'm walking for the rest of the game okay um so rolling back now gen 3 which is the hoen hoen yes okay um again I think that's great, but there's a lot of water in that Seven game. out of eight, too much water. Too much water. Too much water. I will agree, while a lot of people gave IGN shit for that as like a negative they had, people couldn't really step back at the time and say... And I can absolutely admit this, because I put Hoenn as my number two, because I, I personally enjoy it. But I can absolutely straight up say there it was a that game was very reliant on surf and dive, and it shouldn't be that reliant on that, it. That game was heavily dependent on a lot of... I don't hey, think chimps. I don't think you should go only be able to get to one town by surfing there. But what I mean is like the second island gym going all the way across and then slightly up just to get to the path to the third gym. What about Pacifolog? That was annoying to find. <laughs> that was the bane of my childhood because I'd forget where I was and I'd go, "Oh my god, I found the No, it's the submarine again." <laughs> Um, okay, so moving from there quickly, I suppose. Um, I, will, I will say I liked the differences in some of the islands in Hoenn, like the seventh gym, how it was like a lot of the trees, like if we could describe it as an Australian plant, like mangroves growing in yep. the water that you could walk through in there. That was yep. cool. But uh, yeah, back to it. So Sinnoh, Gen 4. S Gen 4. Um, and th that's not a knock on the game. I, th I absolutely no, it, it, I, I love... say it's not a knock on the game. It's it's higher than most of them. I love, I love, love, love Hard Gold and Soul Silver. The fact that your Pokemon follows you around and you can turn around and talk to it is... Honestly, I don't know why they don't do it in the rest of the games. It, it is such a, a cool feature. And I, I don't know what it is about the, the little overworld sprite following you around, like one step behind. I just always thought it was really, really cool. Yeah. Um, Diamond and Pearl. They got to do that in uh, one area in Diamond and Pearl too, wasn't it? Where yeah. there was a Pokemon zone where you could walk around with them. Diamond and Pearl is a bit more meh. I just played it to get the, the box legendaries and that was about it. Yep. I didn't particularly love it. I didn't hate it. But right. I, I will say this. One thing I forgot to bring up about Sinnoh that I like is um, 
some of the gym leaders, like, I like the idea that the first gym leader, his dad, is the sixth gym leader, and the fact that the first gym leader is Rock, and his dad, his gym is mainly Steel, which is like a purified version of Rock. I get that. That's pretty cool. I, I like that. Really I like I like symmetry like that. I dig it. I also like with the eighth gym leader, he's like, he just doesn't care, and you like you got to try and like... Get a bit Fire of... Fire him up. Yeah! Um, Alright, moving quickly from there. Um, I forgot what's after that. I kind of think we're we're moving quickly in a, in, in a top three territory. Okay, so we are in top three territory. So let's go. Aloan, so, Aloa, so Gen 1, Kanto. Gen 2, oh. Gen 3, yep. Gen 4. So there's five. So number six, well, you know, number three from the... Three, so My the top three now. So number three is the Galar region. So sort of. So we shield. both have the same spot yes. for Galar. I I I think the game is a- absolutely fantastic. Man, a lot of original purists are gonna hate us. I I love the game. I think it's a breath of, breath of fresh air. It, it definitely feels why. like they tried to take a lot of new chances with some stuff, and a lot of it works. Some of it doesn't, but a lot of it works. I think it's disappointing that. They're reusing old assets from Sun and Moon, yeah. and then and then saying in the same breath, we don't have time to put all the Pokemon into the Pokedex. Yeah, I think that that's a really shitty thing to do, um, given the fact that you're trying to promote people to to pick up your your um, Pokemon Home service. So you know you can't transfer your, for example, Mudkip from Pokemon Go into Pokemon your, Home. Your shiny. Mudkip that you bred for battle purposes. Si, senor. Um, no, it, it's disappointing to see that you can't use, you know, specific Pokemon. You know, I, I've spent a lot of time um, breeding and developing teams. Westy has seen some of my teams there. I have. You they have. Are, you sort them out into boxes in their teams ready to go. Um, They all have items and stuff like that, but... Look, I think it's disappointing that you can't use the, the mons. But well, that back when we used to play, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but back when we used to play Pokemon Showdown Simulator, you just reminded me, and this is how I learned uh, why I'd have a problem with Mega Evolution sometimes too. Is like, all right, what items do you want to give your Pokemon? Everyone gets a Mega Stone. Well, <laughs> because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know at that everything. time. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know. I I thought I could, but I couldn't. Um, I think it's disappointing that we lost Mega Evolutions. I understand why they had to go. Because they were making the game easy street, which do, which again on the same foot doesn't make sense because I they the, then included the XP share I as the, a base thing yeah, for us, yeah. which just it doesn't make sense. It's like okay, let's forego Mega Evolutions because it makes the game easy, but here keep the XP share that is from X and Y that is completely and utterly busted to um. It's to help the people like me that only stick with their stars. Mm, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Boomer. <laughs> okay, Boomer. I'm like seven months older than you. Again, okay, Boomer. Oh, all right, man. So uh, that leaves us with two left. And before you say it, I, I want to guess. So you haven't said Kalos and that gen yet. I'm going to put that as number two. Ah, uh, no, actually, no, no you, no, you know this number two. You know there is number two. Okay, so black and white and black and white two, which I hate that name. I hate the name black and white two. You could have called it something better than that. Mm. Pokemon Grey. <laughs> that would have been pretty cool, but there were two games. I know, but you didn't have to. Like Back in Emerald, you could get both Kyogre and Ground, and you can get... Shade 50 Zephyr. of Grey and Shade number one. <laughs> 50 Shades of Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> and 50 Shades of Pokemon Grey. Ooh. Dearing me. Um, shade one, slightly darkish black. Yeah. Shade two, slightly lightish black. I'm going to stop you right now because you'll keep describing <laughs> no, greys. I will. Um, <laughs> Unova was fantastic. And like I said, go and just go and get the game. I, know I think I think Joel's got it so bucks. I could probably borrow it from him. I think he's got both. I think Joel has black uh, and white and black and white too. Or he might just have black and then... White two or something yeah. like that. But. Just give it a go. Um, give it a chance. If considering you're in the the Pokemon mood at the moment, just give it a bit of a rock and a roll, yep. and off you go. Um, so moving from there, that brings us to number one being 
the sixth generation. So, Kalos, what? Kalos, Kalos as and well as Omega, Omega Ruby. Ruby. Uh, Omega Sapphire and... Uh, no, yeah, it's Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. So, the reason I put Gen 3 so low is solely because... You feel like it got improved um, in Kalos. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire made the games much better. Um, it took the battle island thing that they had from Emerald and made it better. Um, no, I, I I love that game. I think it's fantastic. Um, X and Y was easily the coolest and most innovative part of uh, Pokemon for a very, very long time because it had start, started to just go, get your starters, level the thing up, okay. Now it I was like, like I like that it was kind of like get your starters. All right, cool. You got that. Get your second starters. Yes, uh, these ones mega evolve and they're cool as hell. Um, and they're the originals. Ooh. Yeah. So th- there were a lot of cool Pokemon in Gen Six that were, I think, slightly underrated. I think Gumi is Gudra. Or no, Gumi. Gumi. Gumi is the absolute god. The snail lord himself. Okay. Um, yeah. So look, I think there's a lot of un- underrated Pokemon in that in that gen, and Mega Ev- Evolutions were cool as hell. I talked about Kangaskhan before, but you look at some of the Mega Evolutions that were released in that gen, and just, whew, that's yeah. a that's a lot of um, you know, subtle but cool as hell design changes. Um, you know, Mega Morlile, Mega Sableye, you know, stuff like that. I think stuff that if it doesn't evolve, it gets a mega evolution. And I can agree yeah. with that. I will say one Pokemon I enjoyed. They brought in Gen Six, which was in X and Y, which I dig was Halucha. Yeah, it's the Mexican fighter. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of, you mentioned uh, Mega Evolution being broken. Speaking of broken, I have been pl- trying to play the WWE Two K Twenty, which is. <laughs> Broken yeah. isn't a word I can use to describe it. I'll tell you some of the uh, glitches I've encountered, okay? I have had the game crash several times, so just freeze up during an entrance. Someone showed it out best when they went on um, a Reddit and they uploaded it, where the announcer basically went... And you know how when a game glitches, the sound glitches with it? Yeah. So it basically went... They introduced Batista and it's like, and his opponent, Batista! Crash. I have That's had some good game design. I there. have had in the universe mode women compete for men's championships. Here's an example. I had Rhea Ripley win the Raw Women's Championship. It then popped up. Rhea Ripley has won the Intercontinental Championship. So she somehow beat my Intercontinental Champion to not only become Raw Women's Champion, but to become Intercontinental Champion. I have had the male superstars compete for other male superstars. Okay. Would you like me to explain how that works? I don't understand. It popped but sure. up. So AJ Styles was my United States champion, and Johnny Gargano beat him for the championship. Johnny was in a rivalry with Tommaso Ciampa. And then it popped up and said, Johnny Gargano has won the Tommaso Ciampa. <laughs> uh, dear I me. have played the story mode where I'm in a mixed tag team match. Halfway through the mixed tag team match, and I was playing as the person in the ring, halfway through it, the game kind of flashed for a moment, and usually you you get cutscenes or something. I didn't get a single cutscene. The AI just took control of the match. (laughs) Like, I could pause, I could change the options, I just couldn't play. And I waited to see if if she'd tag out to bring in the other guy. I'm like, oh, I'm probably playing as him now. She tags out, he comes out, he starts controlling himself. I've been kicked out of the match. The, the AI has realised that the you're AI. just completely and utterly incompetent. And <laughs> yes, to do it yes. The ropes. I have had people hang up on the ropes and the ropes stretch into them. I've had someone walk for a clothesline and his counter literally, and this isn't how he's supposed to counter, his counter was literally, his spine went like this. And then he flipped back up. I have had a guy go for a clothesline where instead of go, like spinning around and going like that, the top half of his body spun around and then he clotheslined. <laughs> I have had people's faces disappear. I have had their facial hair disappear. I have had people compete in matches where they're competing, and then their hair rises above their head and disappears. I have created people where I'm able to get their eye to go from here 
all the way up to here as a slug monster. And if I want, I can make it go down to here. <laughs> I have had people's hair go out of control. In my, on my YouTube video I uploaded, their hair is going out of control. I made her so tall, her head fucking sticks out of the fucking front of the car when they're driving. What kind of game is this? <laughs> broken is what... And the worst part, the worst part is that, yes, it was broken to begin with, but people were fucking laughing at it and having a decent time with it watching the glitches. And then they tried to put out a, fi a patch and they're like, all right, yeah. They got rid of a lot of the fun glitches and left the shit. 2K19 felt like it finally got some footing back. And 20 just stomped up and down on that. I've got, I've got one other glitch I was going to say, which was great. I was in a match where I had two managers and my opponent had one. Halfway through the match, one of my guys, one of my managers is standing there. And then a person, a copy of him, walks out of him. And then another. And then another. So by the end of the He's match... He's doing the mirror technique. I have <laughs> my opponent who started out with one uh, manager, now has two. They both look the same. And I have a total of, I think it was, uh, four managers, one looking different, and three of them looking the exact same. That's a spicy meatball. That game is broken, man. Not even in a fun way, just in a broken way. I don't know. I, I don't get how you spend the money on the ga it on was, a game like it that. It was on a Black Friday sale. And I figured I'd try it, and if I didn't like it, I'd trade it in. And I'm probably going to trade it in. I think that's a good idea. I think it is, too. I definitely think it's a good idea. This is a, I, I shouldn't have brought this up. We we started out on such a high, and we're now on such a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I don't disagree with you. But <sighs> let's circle back to Pokemon. Back to Pokemon. I'm still, right. I'm still <clears throat> like, loving Loving Pokemon, but Gen Six, like seriously, like you, you go through the list of Mega Revolutions. Your, your Mega Venusaur, your Mega Blastoise, your two Charizards, your two, two Mewtwo's, your two, um, you know, your Ampharos, your Scizor, your Heracross, you know, Houndoom, Jesus, um, what else? Pizza. You know, Lucario, yep, Abomas Snow, Gengar. Um, no, Gengar. Alakaz How ridiculous mm, yeah. did Gengar look? Alakazam. Yep. Um, Sharpedo. Yep. Uh, Camerupt. Mm -hmm. Mega Altaria. Yeah. Um, look, I just... I thought that was cool. Mega Salamence, even though he kind of looked like a half-crested moon. He did. I mean... Yeah. How ridiculous does that look? That's Pokemon Moon right there. That's a real Pokemon moon. Yeah, that, that is the Pokemon moon. And that's where they should have left the fucking thing. But I I had absurdly detest the fact that we don't you they don't use Mega Revolutions anymore because they they spent the time and effort to do fifty nearly fifty Pokemon. It was like forty five, fifty. Yep. Fifty Pokemon in um you know The couple games the two games where it was out. Yeah. Where they, where they, you know, tried to innovate and then I don't know people just kind of whinged and bitched that they were too strong like I, I don't disagree Mega Mewtwo X and Mewtwo Y are just completely and utterly busted and I yeah. don't understand why Game Freak considered them in the first place to to do Get it Mega Revolution, and then they and then they did Rayquaza as, as a balancing effort which clearly didn't work as well because he became just as broken as Mewtwo yeah. and and they, they serve completely that's like different to roles. That's like trying to fix a fire by throwing more gas on it. Yeah. And uh, seeing if it if it calms down. Shiny Rayquaza looks cool as hell, though. He's always looked cool with the, uh, the black. black. Yeah. He has, he has very, very much looked cool. Yeah, well, that that's pretty much it. So, I'm stoked. Got my vigor back for Pokemon. I might try and pick up um, Sun and Moon again and just try and get through the, get it so I can get the box legendaries and what have you. And that will be it. Hopefully, I may have even finished it. I can't honestly remember. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm stuck on like the third or the fourth. I'm not going back to it. The third or the fourth. I'm um, not going back to it. Trial. I want, I want my badges. It. I don't want my gems. I want my badges. 
I don't disagree with you, but I don't know. I I still don't know who thought that was a good idea. I understand you want to try and innovate, but that is just not the way to do it. I think they need to innovate, and I think it was okay. I just think it was a swing and a miss. Mm. Yeah, but you know, whatever. Oh well. All, all for good fun. Yeah, uh, that's I, it, you know. I think it's about time we wrapped it up, Mr. I th- West. I think so. I, I believe so. It's been a good first episode. episode Thank you for one compared to episode listening. zero. Yeah, well, we did about an hour and 20 for the first one, and that kind of uh, disappeared into the aether of Westy's hard drive. Yeah. Never to be seen again. Never to be seen again. It got corrupted. It disappeared. Alrighty. Well, it's been fun it's alex signing off thank you for listening i'm passing to westy now (laughs) uh yeah that's it we'll do these whenever we can i guess keep it going just when we find shit to talk about we had a fair decent stuff to talk about what with the new xbox coming out too which is a great way to really kick it off and me being able to get a night off work which is even better for this but i will say that's it this is episode one, and I say we're signing off at this point. Ah.